Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment simply creates an exemption to the Jones Act requirements for ships carrying liquefied natural gas, a sector of the market, the maritime industry. I'm not really sure why, but they refuse to serve despite its complete insulation from foreign competitors, harming Americans and empowering our enemies. This amendment still applies these restrictions to Russian, Chinese, and Iranian flagged and crewed ships. Well, there have been some improvements in the industry, and I'll acknowledge that. The few Jones Act LNG ships that have been produced are refueling ships, not transport ships. Anyone who conflates the two is purposefully misleading the American people to protect the shipbuilding industry, union leadership, and foreign adversaries at their own constituents' expense. The failure to produce LNG transport ships despite over a decade of record high natural gas production in the U.S. lays bare the failures of protectionism in incentivizing ship production. Instead, of, instead, the lack of competition has resulted in a roughly $500 million differential between a Jones Act compliant ocean going LNG carrier and a foreign ship. The truth is the failure of the shipbuilding industry to meet this moment and produce affordable ships is the reason American cities, territories, and states are unable to consume American LNG and instead are forced to accept foreign natural gas from Russia as Puerto Rico did in February of 22, right as Putin invaded Ukraine. This completely undermines our economic security and our national security, destroying the very basis for the Jones Act itself as it benefits our enemies at the expense of American natural gas producers and consumers. You can support the shipbuilding industry in America and the natural gas industry at the same time. We just fail to do that. Unfortunately, there have been some misleading claims to undermine this amendment. I'd like to take some time to address those now. For those who claim that New England should be on its own due to its decision to reject, to reject pipeline infrastructure, this argument fails to reconcile the situation in Puerto Rico, which imports more natural gas where pipeline infrastructure is not a possibility. Moreover, oppo opponents admit that New England is indeed importing foreign natural gas, imported on foreign vessels that could be replaced by American liquefied natural gas. Claims that this will open up domestic commerce to foreign ships, that is obviously true but it fails to recognize that the current status quo is foreign LNG being imported from foreign sources. These ships are already, are already currently entering our ports. The only difference with this amendment is that they would be providing American, American natural gas. Finally, claims that this exemption would allow the use of American natural gas would somehow undercut the domestic maritime industry's ability to serve LNG operators fails to acknowledge the abject failure by the industry to serve this sector despite over a decade of record production. This also falls into the purposeful obfuscation of bunker ships versus transportation ships. They are two different things, they're not the same, so we shouldn't conflate those two arguments. Unfortunately, this will prevail over my objections. So having a, had a moment and an opportunity to offer the amendment, Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to withdraw the amendment.